Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo992 and today we are back for another brand new video. Today's video is going to be all about the famous, that's right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, your comments have been heard. And more importantly, I've now finally finished my notes for today's video. It's something that we discussed previously in the past. I am going to be bringing you all the stats from the midfield and of our sort of attacking players and even our two strikers as well, throwing them up there to see who is performing, who's making the difference when they're on the park, what their goal to game ratio is, their assists. As we look at them, because if you think about it, we're basically a third way through the season, so I think that's fair now to actually reflect it and hopefully this video will inform me who's performing and maybe even change your mind about a couple of players as well so should be a fun and interesting video if you haven't done so already please consider hitting that subscribe button it definitely helps the channel out as we make our way to 55k that's a wee tip to Arfield by the way whose stats are pretty surprising anyway three two one that off with the captain captain tavernier is known as attacking fullback Let's be fair, he's not really a defensive one. But his stats have been absolutely incredible so far this season. He has played 26 games, resulting in 9 goals and 11 assists. That is honestly incredible because if you think about it, 26 games, he's been involved in 20 goals in those 26. Well, I mean, what more could you ask for from an attacking fullback? Some defence. Fair play. But like Tavernier, we are going to be focused more on the attack. The man has got a goal every 249 minutes. Now that is an important number to remember as we sort of compare with the midfield. Because let's be fair, the guy is play, playing full back. So he is back quite a lot of the time. Yes, he does get forward. Yes, he does take corners everything like that. But when you're comparing it with the midfield, Tavernier is still having an absolutely incredible season. And like I said, 26 games, he's been involved in 20 goals. Now jumping quickly over to the other side, we're going to be focusing on another player who has really impressed in the attacking front. No, it's not Flanagan. Stop it, you. Stop it. It is going to be none other than Borna Bear himself. The man has played 12 games, he scored one goal, and he's got seven assists. Once again, a great insight to what we are missing down that left-hand side, because you can say what you want about Flanagan, and yes, he gets stuck in. He's very, very good defensively, but he does not offer the same. To be honest with you, he's played 18 games and only assisted one. So when Flanagan is playing instead of BB, there is a clear void of attacking and creative threat down that left-hand side. And that's a big reason why Rangers maybe have been struggling to break down like Aberdeen, Kilmarnock, even Spartak Moscow at home. BB was a clear miss and when he comes back and when he's fully fit, maybe that is going to ease off the midfield for the creative worries. And also before we move on to the next player, by the way, he has obviously got a goal every 1,305 minutes, which is again very important to remember when you're comparing it with the more attacking midfield players at the club. As we make our way to the midfield, we're actually going to talk about two players very, very briefly because I don't think it's very fair to sort of hold them up to the same stature of players playing in front of them who is getting more attacking opportunities whose job it is to create things. Because Andy Halliday and Ryan Jack, when they've played in the midfield, it's certainly not to get forward and create things. It's to be neat and tidy, sweep up the defensive mid areas and pass it on to those creative players. By the way, to break down their stats, Andy Halliday has played 17 games and assisted two. And obviously Ryan Jack's had a wee bit of an injury prone sort of season so far, but he has married 16 games and one assist as well, which is actually pretty decent considering the two defensive midfield players and Andy Halliday maybe for about five six maybe even more has played left back in some of those games as well so pretty decent little turnaround there for the creative defensive mids now when you reach this part of this video you might be saying to yourself then how are we struggling creatively we didn't need to sign another creative midfield player when we've got fullbacks offering that much and even our defensive mids are chipping in with assists now and again what are we talking about why is this video even being made well, when we discuss the next couple of people, you might realise where we're struggling because this is their job to create things and the first person who isn't necessarily doing that, I know he's had some good performances, strong on the ball, but his stats to game ratio just isn't that impressive when you consider how far he actually plays up the park and that is going to be none other than Olivier Ajaya. The man has played 24 games, he's got two goals and one assist. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, the creative mid, the man that can just beat people for fun, has got the same amount of assists as Ryan Jack. And John Flanagan's got the same amount of assists in less games than Big O.E. I mean, what's going on? The man's got the talent. What is happening? His goal to game ratio, by the way, is one goal every 905 minutes. That's closer to Borna Bear than it is to Captain Tav, who's played a similar amount of games, which is frightening. Now, I'm not out here absolutely blasting a guy saying, oh, he's not been good enough, he's terrible. No, there has been some games he's been absolutely brilliant and he's just got things moving and ticking along. But when you're looking at it where he plays... 
Is he impacting the game enough? Are these games where we're struggling versus like Aberdeen and Kilmarnock most recently? Like, is Ajaya stepping up and doing enough in that midfield role? Where he's playing, are you happy with that input? 24 games, two goals and one assist. However, we're going to talk about the next player and it's going to be Mr. Scotty Arfield himself, who's doing a great little thing for charity as well, giving away his signed match shirt. He's already raised around about £8,000 so far already, which is tremendous for the charity, so shout out to Scotty Arfield as well. Classy classy man. Now I feel like Scotty Arfield's a bit of a hit and miss I think in most games because some games it looks like he's got the talent other games where it just looks like the game's passing him by if that kind of makes sense. He just doesn't look quite at it like he didn't know what his role is. His actual stats though are actually pretty decent. He's got 21 games, he scored 5 goals and got 4 assists on those games as well. Even that feels a wee bit misleading because if you look at the league he's played 10 in the league, he's got 4 goals and 4 assists. It's the other games especially in European football what Scotty Arfield is really struggling in and that's what's bringing his stats down. When he plays in Europe, we've not quite seen the best of Scotty Arfield yet. Oh, and by the way, as we're talking about the league, he actually averages a goal every 207 minutes, which is pretty damn decent. But looking at his entire start through the 21 games, he's averaging a goal every 321 minutes, which is still pretty good, especially when you throw it up against the Giants. <laughs> and finally, to wrap up a little centre mid trio of dreams, we have Lasana Koulibaly, who started the season off tremendously well, then obviously got that injury. He's not been quite the same, in my personal opinion, which has been dragging his stats down as he's putting 16 appearances in, two goals and two assists, with a goal coming every 629 minutes as well for Lasana Koulibaly. So that's us wrapped up our more attacking midfield players. I think Arfield, Ajaya, and Lasana Koulibaly are three the same kind, like they are the ones that's running up and down, getting involved and is expected to unlock the defences. So what's your thoughts when you look at the three of them? Who's standing out to you? Is any of them standing out? Or are they disappointing? Make sure you let me know in the comment section below as we make our way to the wingers. Now this one is interesting. And I want to start off with someone who's kind of won everyone's hearts, to be honest with you, and it's going to be none other than Ryan Kent, because when we first signed him, we were a bit, it was a bit of a head scratcher, because he wasn't too great in his most recent loan, and we were like, do we really need him? Then he started performing, then he started sparking us into life, and the man's got clear talent. Every single time he touches the ball, people are expecting things, they're getting up, you can hear the roar of Ibrox, because they're expecting this young Larry to lead us to glory, but his stats... Actually, to be honest with you, to be blunt, they kind of disappointed me. His stats are 22 games, 3 goals and 2 assists, which blew my mind because I thought he was doing a lot better than that. Now, I know stats aren't everything and people might say, oh, you can't just judge people on stats because you could have the assist of the assist. And that's completely fair. That is a good counter argument. But we are here to discuss the creative issues and we've got people playing over 20 games now with 2 or 3 assists overall, which to me... Playing for a team like Glasgow Rangers when you're so dominant and you're you're so on the attack of certain teams, I think you should be doing a lot better than that. And Ryan Kent, I've said numerous times on his channel, has been absolutely brilliant, but I'm still expecting more. And lastly, before we move on to the next winger, Ryan Kent's goal to game ratio is one goal every 570 minutes. Now, stop the bus, I want off, we're about to talk about Glenn. The single best thing that the zip eating, I just stand at the sides and they headstands loving Graham Murray ever done for the Glasgow Rangers was sign Glenn Middleton. Glenn has played 17 games, he's got 5 goals and 3 assists. But wait before you go in and you might be saying, oh wait, I thought it was a little better than that. The man has had 3 starts, he's averaging 1 goal every 99 minutes, which is by far the best so far, and to be honest with you, spoiler alert, it's the best in the team. You always say as a young player you need to make your minutes count, and I'm here, the stats suggest that Glenn Middleton is doing exactly that. Moving on to Daniel Kindias, now the man that's in all of our hearts because he never stops running. I wish I could have an interception and tackle ratio for this, and how many like miles he runs per game, but that isn't the point of the video, we are talking about the creative side of things, and Daniel Kindias has played 21 games, he's got 3 goals, and four assists, which is a goal every 520 minutes for the Candyman Can. Now, as we move to our last player, now this one was a wee bit difficult because he's only played seven games overall, but it's going to be the man who really showed his quality against Scotland, and that's going to be Eros Gresda. That's Rocky. As I said, Gresda's played seven games, he's got two goals and one assist, which is annoying because his goal to game ratio is 1-1-8, which makes me think of Ryan, and that instantly makes me angry. And to be honest with you, I don't know really what to say about Gresda's actual stats because he has played very little games. He's only started two games, played very little football, but he's averaging a goal every 1-1-8 minutes, which is pretty decent. So if we give him more, the stats suggest that he will impact more than Ryan Kent and Daniel Kindeas, which is surprising. 
that's actually going to be the midfield players wrapped up in a neat little bow in terms of the creative side of things. Moving on to the forwards, this is where it gets fun because we get to talk about the Buffalo Soldier. The man has played 25 games, he scored 15 and he's assisted 8. To be fair, he's had about five or six chopped off as well, so what his stats could really be is absolutely frightening. But as it stands officially, because of the SFA's incompetence, Alfredo Morelos has played 25, he's been involved in 23 goals in those 25 games. With a goal to game ratio of one goal every 134 minutes for the Buffalo Soldier. And last but not least, it is the man who's seven foot and he plays the flute. Again, someone else that's been sort of marrowed by injuries and suspensions. He has played 18 games. He's got five goals and three assists in those appearances as well, which is actually pretty damn good so if you think about it our forwards are doing our job it's just maybe a one or two players in the midfield that's not really pulling their weight in terms of the stats that is where the issues lie in my personal opinion especially after looking at it because I think our fullbacks they're creative they're doing their jobs it's the one or two players that we're playing in the advanced roles that's not quite unlocking the doors especially when you're playing against teams that's just going to sit back and defend Little correction, actually it's one assist, not three assists, apologies, but it's me, you knew a mistake was coming eventually. His goal to game ratio by the way is one goal every 167 minutes for the man who's 7 foot and he plays the flute and that is going to be the end of today's creative attacking or creative problems discussion video. I've been seeing you over 92, if you don't mind hitting that like button that'd be absolutely tremendous and make sure you be getting your thoughts out there. I know I've said it 1500 times. I do realise I'm annoying. Yes I do, yes I do. If you'd like to support the channel directly there will be a link to the Patreon in the description below. I've been seeing you over 92, thank you so much for watching and bye bye.